Namaskaram. Yoga Charini Sri Devi of Switzerland is one of the few members of the yoga family who studied directly under Swamiji himself. In fact, she was with him for one month in August 1993, four months before he left his body. For almost 30 years, she has followed this Rishi culture yoga path in her home in Switzerland. She has come to the ashram many times and is now competent to assist in the teaching of the six months course. She actively travels in Europe, visiting the Gitananda centers in the various European countries. A lover of nature, much of her yoga sadhana consists of meditative excursions into the mystic beauty of the Alps. Her husband, Felix, is also a nature lover who accompanies her on these excursions and supports her in every possible way. So welcome, Sri Devi. Really happy to have you today. Thank you very much. Namaste to you. Thank you for the invitation. It's really fun having the, ch the chance to join. So thank you and many people, are, I am sure they'd love to see you and hear from you. You know, this is a different interaction, you know, rather like we feel quite close now because we are focusing on each other. So I think we'll get started on our interview with our questions for you. Mm -hmm. so start. Our first one is the definition section. What is your own personal definition of the word yoga? Um, as yoga, I think the definition of Swamiji to be the way of life is most um, it's the best to, uh, to my opinion. It is the way of life or the way of living life. To go through life with Swadhyaya, realize all what is going on, what it is doing with oneself and to evolve, to become a better human being by each chance we get. Beautiful because, you know, I really value you because you have seen Swamiji in person and you were there in quite a, like, you were in that year, so you were lucky to <laughs> meet him. So I'm sure that uh, we really value your points because, you know, it's quite an influence to just have seen him rather than just going through his teaching. So moving on to the next one, the sadhana section. You live in a cold country. You were taught yoga in a very warm tropical country, India. How have you had to adjust your yoga practices to the extreme difference in the climate? Okay. Um, well, uh, it's maybe rather the question how to adapt to the Indian tropical climate because my body, my emotions, my thoughts are used to the, the, the cold climate. So it is more the adjust to adjust to this tropic way um, and not that much to adjust in, in, in Switzerland or in Europe. And on the other hand, I mean, in India, you've got all these uh, climates as well. So maybe this question would be interesting to ask uh, uh, Cheprakash, who was with me in 93 in the ashram, because I think he is really what I think uh, living in, in this cold way that he has not a heating as we have heatings in, in all the houses. So I think as soon as it goes below, let's say 10, 15 degrees uh, Celsius, then we put on the heating and then the cold is no issue for us. Um, on the other side, um, like now, we just had a thunderstorm and it's really humid and hot, like in India. So I'm, I'm kind of sweating be before <laughs> without doing anything. So it feels like India at the moment. And now it's the time for Shitali Pranayama. It really uh, is then the time to realize the effectiveness of these tools we have from yoga to adjust to the different climates. It's just an episode maybe I can tell. Um, when your father was uh, in Switzerland, the, the Italian speaking, Part, I think it was in May, which it was a nice spring weather for us, but for him it was cold. <laughs> so because he was coming from the heat, so it needs uh, time to adjust the body to whatever climate you change. And um, there was somebody who wanted to revise the Shitali Pranayama, and he 
already being cold, thought, oh no, not the Shitali Pranayam, making him even feel more cold. So, um, so the climate outside is one thing, but we have tools in India with heating up our system or cooling it down. Um, if, if outside possibilities are not with air condition or with the heating. And on the other side, it's a nice saying that uh, Amaji is, is often telling the story when the, the Chelas were asking the Guru, oh, Guruji, in winter it's too cold, what shall we do? In summertime it's too hot, what shall we do? So then the Guru said, okay, if it's too hot or too cold outside, so you have to find the perfect place inside. So, yeah. Very nice, Sri Devi, your way of uh, just answering this question. And like this question, I must, I thought that I have to ask you. Like, <laughs> people would like to see your part because uh, there's such an extreme, you know, when you are here, it's like, as you say, you have heater and everything, but whatever, it's quite a difference, especially when you go back to your place or when you come back here. So, and love that story of reminding many of us and some people who didn't know it. So thank you for putting it now. Uh, and we'll be moving on to the next one. So going into the contemporary yoga scene, what is your opinion of the status of the contemporary yoga scene, especially in the present time of the Corona crisis? Well, in connection with the Corona crisis, um, it changed a lot. Let's say yoga is, is changing always. When, when you look back centuries, it's always changing. But now it is being closed inside and having, like you, you're still in lockdown. We are not anymore. Um, so it's the only um, method of having contact outside is, is, is by all these uh, e-tools. So maybe my situation is, is a bit different because um, COVID, I first realized out from Switzerland, let's say in January, then we were looking to China and thinking, what is the problem over there, far away? And then it started to come to Europe, but then I came to India. So from India, again, we thought, oh, what's going in in Europe? We had all these really bad news and thought it's not possible, what are, what's wrong? And I only realized that it's really a problem. <laughs> when my flight got cancelled two days before my actual flying back and decided to just jump on the next flight and come back. And I arrived on a Monday afternoon and two, three hours later, government decided for lockdown. So I just came back in time for this really special situation. And for me, it was perfect um, to adjust to, as we said before, to, to the new climate, we had nice weather, and it was so peaceful and calm because we are not that far from the airport, so we have airplanes flying over us some times of the day. So it was such peace to be here, and I profited from that time to work in the garden. It was just to be here and to look after Felix. He was working at uh, home office, so I was doing just everything around. So for me, it was like, I didn't feel like going back to the yoga scene. <laughs> for me, it was like having kind of paradise. So um, I realized how much e-teaching is going on. Some teachers just jumped in to keep their classes going. Um, and for me, I thought, okay, there's so much on YouTube. If nobody is asking me, I'm not bothering to bring these tools working. And nobody asked me. <laughs> so I thought, okay, this is a sign that I do not have to adjust to the situation. On the other side, I followed a few of uh, Dr. Ananda's uh, sessions, which were very um, uh, bringing a lot of inputs. And, and also you uh, tell me, Appa, a series I watched and it was really nice to also hear of some other parts of your father's life bringing again some other puzzles to this whole yoga family like you said uh, that I also had the chance to be with Swamiji and, and have that energy or his being which was very important for me 
at the time. So I cannot really say the actual yoga scene um, with this COVID-19 because somehow I escaped <laughs> or I didn't jump in. <laughs> so, and on the other side, in seven weeks, uh, I started teaching again. So I have yoga classes again. So it's only eight weeks and people survived, so no problem. And what's going on otherwise, I'm just not following somehow. I just, yes, what yeah, yeah, I look for myself, I'm not comparing. And if other people um, have the interest of following YouTube sessions, they can, there's a lot. But from my opinion or for myself, I'm happy with the situation as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Shri Devi, you really explained the your situation, and I'm. I know. I remember the time when your flight got cancelled, and like it was quite. A, I kind of a, sure it was a panic, and like you know, we didn't really know what was happening. So you were lucky you got through before <laughs> we were put into the lockdown. So okay, so moving on to the next one, the yogi character section. So in modern times, the most important quality of a yoga teacher seems to be flexibility and glamour. What is your opinion on this? Um, again, the, the yoga scene, so to call, is changing all the time. I mean, yoga used to be um, at the guru's feet. You had to apply for a guru to be taught yoga and it was only for a few people who had the, um, the desire to uh, learn about yoga, to go the path of yoga and they had to ask a, a guru, first they had to find a guru, then to have to ask a guru whether they accept them as chela and you were supposed to live a few years with, with the guru to get the teachings uh, along as you were um, evolving yourself or changing yourself. So if you come from that extreme point to the extreme point today that maybe you have a yoga teacher calling himself a yoga teacher after a weekend course and offering then uh, his teaching, whatever he learned during that weekend uh, to others. So this is just the actual situation. I guess that um, coming first that the, most people think yoga is exercise, is fitness. It's probably what fits most people because with the sitting uh, professions most people have. So they, they have a need for the moving, for, for the stretching, for the strength. And this is what they get. But it's not what we from the ashram or from this parampara, I understand as yoga. So it's it's our personal view, and I think the most important is it's our personal experience. So we, what we can give to others is our experience. And what is special is that each teacher is a bit different. We all go through the same process, but finally each teacher is a bit different because they give what they experienced. So. The, the modern, glamorous, I mean, if you have a, a nice studio and um, you have whatever sexy dress to practice, um, if, if this is what people need, they find it. And if people have other interests, they also find it. Maybe a bit more difficult, <laughs> but what I hear always the feedback from my students is that what they um, realize the big difference is the, the, um, the importance of the pranayamas. So it, it's not only the breathing, um, but what I like to bring through to my students is to, that they realize prana is not the breathing, prana is in, in everything. So yoga is all about energy. So you can take uh, or get some energy out of, of some asanas, for sure. But you can get um, energy out of the pranayamas, the, the, the breathing. But you can also get energy if you go for a walk or if you go to the garden or if you have good food, for example. And on the other side, I'd like to 
um, bring consciousness to the fact that people realize the swadhyaya, how they lose energy. So with the wrong exercise, with the wrong breathing, with the wrong diet, with um, not going outside, staying inside all the time. So the prana is, um, I think, which is one of the most important things in this paramparai, especially with the Athenas. This is just really a jewel, which other teachings don't have that. And this is missing them, but people going to other glamorous yoga, they don't know what they're missing. So they feel happy. And if they feel happy, if this is what they want, well, that's what they get. <laughs> so I think everyone is getting what he's probably ready for at the moment. There is a saying that you find the teacher or your guru, which is um, getting away the, um, the darkness, uh, bringing you to the light is when you are ready for it. So I guess that in modern times, you get this kind of teacher or what you then understand as guru, what you are ready for, what your cup can be filled with. So I don't look that much what's going on because I say, okay, everybody's responsible for himself. So this is my view. It's really good. Like rather than saying that only we are correct or I am correct, it's like everyone has their own, you know, perspective and their own expectation and their own, you know, dreams and everything. So very nicely pushed, we really liked it a lot. And moving on to the next one, the yoga teaching section. So you teach a limited number of yoga students, but every year you go to the Alps and conduct a residential course for a large number of people for a week. What is the extra benefit received by the people when they practice the residential course? So um, it's very much different coming back to your climate question <laughs> because one week is in January when there is snow outside and people walk through the snow or they go cross country uh, sliding. What is it? Cross country. Well, the sport cross country. Um, and then you are in the heated <laughs> house <laughs> practicing then uh, hatha yoga in the asanas the pranayama and i also give them different uh, insights on subjects like um, being aware of the koshas being aware of the five kleshas or another week i had the chakra uh, another week um, it is more emphasis on, on the Hathenas, the prana, as I said before, realizing how to gain and how to lose prana. Um, so the winter session and in July is the summer week is, is much different because in summer we have the chance to go outside as well. So outside in summer is perfect because with the mountains, um, I mean, where I live, uh, 20 to 6 is sunrise at the moment. So in the mountains, it's half past seven because still the sun comes up behind the mountains. So it is, people come on holiday with yoga practice. And so they also have the, the, the holiday Surya Namaskar <laughs> at half past seven. <laughs> so we go out if possible, if the weather is, is fine. And so we have the Surya Namaskar with the sunrise. And it gives them really the... Um, the energy or the understanding what Surya Namaskar is, not just the practice. I mean, I was in a class somewhere and it was exactly sunrise and we were practicing Surya Namaskar just in the opposite way. So the sun was in our back. And this was a strange understanding having been more than a year now in India with the sunrise over the Bay of Bengal. Um, yeah. <laughs> They have the chance of, of getting some uh, understanding of the original understanding of yoga. So the Surya Namaskar is important, the breathing is important. They go out for walking or cycling during the day. So then in the uh, afternoon class, it is good for them also to realize that um, with the yoga, we can also compensate for what they have done um, during the walking, using the muscles just in, in, 
one way. So with yoga, we counteract with all these stretching parts to bring again the prana, to bring the balance again into the body, but also in, with the breathing into the koshas. And the thinking, of course, also is balanced. If you are um, having the focus on moving and breathing, so this uh, psychosomatic is then into the somatocytic version. So they, they experience it very much. So this week, it's six days, finally yoga, morning and evening, 12 classes. So it's very interesting to have this um, building up, this, this process during a week. So they really realize that they feel different after a week. So it is in a hotel where they also have very nice vegetarian food. They make their bread, they have uh, cheese, just you can see the cows next door. Um, they have so many homemade things with a lot of herbs they collect. Um, it's, it's a lot of prana in that way as well. So it, it is just fabulous how this week is, is changing um, or, or can change. So this week is, is, is always interesting for me as well to, to to guide these people to a, a better feeling of life. And hopefully also that this experience is then um, continuing for if possible some weeks or maybe even changing their life, giving them inputs, what they can bring into their daily life. Because people coming to the weeks come from all over Switzerland. And so different people, which I only see during the weeks, and it's not the same as, as some students come also to these weeks, but not all. So I have people practicing yoga there only in the January and in the July week and nothing. Well, it's a physical practice during the year. So it's, it's definitely for them always again, this grounding, this getting to the center and, and with all this uh, pranayama to realize um, how important it is to look after themselves. Yes. Very nice. And as you were just saying that, you know, the sunrise over the Alps, it's just nice. Like here we have a sunrise over the ocean. So it's, you know, it's like almost like the same feeling actually. It's great actually, but except, you know, there's the climate change, but you know, in the presence of the sun to do Surya Namaskar, especially, I'm sure it's quite an experience. So thank you so much, Sri Devi, for all the uh, great answers and interesting, really, because you have quite a different life. So I was personally learning a lot about it. Like, I just knew you had, you know, these uh, the one week sessions, but I didn't know much about it. So now I know it. And, you know, everyone else also knows it. So we can have an extra idea, you know, twice a week in January and July. <laughs> okay. So we'll be moving on into the rapid fire and that's the favorite of all. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have 10 words to face. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So we'll start. Uh, your first one is rigid yoga. Okay. I put it back to you. What is rigid yoga for you? <laughs> Okay, so I meant in the way that frigid as the frigid zone, as one of the three zones, the target temperate and frigid zone. So just for the people who don't know what I meant. So the frigid is the top where, the kind of region where Sri Devi is from. So like frigid yoga. <laughs> okay, my um, answering to that is I think it's um, necessary that you have the chance to come to Switzerland. You're most heartedly invited. So that you can see it is not that uh, difficult to live in this climate. <laughs> so that the, what the cold zones are on, on the geographical part is, is not cold all year round. That's like now we have up to 30 degrees, 60% humidity. So it's really hot at the moment. <laughs> and it can be really cold uh, during winter, let's say in our area till minus 10. Celsius. So from minus 10 Celsius up to 30, 35 maximum. So within this range. So I mean, if you go to the desert, um, there you have this range within one day, night. So we are still lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
And your next one is COVID-19. Oh, I think I said enough about this COVID-19 in, in connection with how I saw it. So for me, COVID-19 was kind of peaceful time. <laughs> and your third one is you. Me. Trying to be a good human being to evolve with all the situation, with all the stones in, in my path to realize what I can learn about the situations. And um, me is also to give the information or my experience of yoga to other people to help them also to cope with life or to become a better human being. Great. And the next one is Anandashram. Okay. <laughs> so this is also home, or maybe rather put the yoga family home. Um, this is the inspiration, or let's say it is like the yoga nest. So that with Swamiji, uh, it is like from the egg of, of the interest of yoga, then with the uh, little chicken or the silly little chicken <laughs> growing, growing and yes, flying off into the world, but always coming back to the nest again. And this inspiring um, information is, is, is always growing with me as well. So each time I come back, people think, well, you've been so many times now, why are you still going? And I say, well, it's, it's always, I can always learn there. It is always getting deeper. It is getting with what I know, having more connection. It's wonderful the way uh, Dr. Nanda, your father and Swamiji, and Swamiji Amaji uh, give the information with the satsangas, with the teaching. It's, it's always learning more and having more understanding for the whole paramparai. Great, Sri Devi. Nice idea of the nest. I like it. <laughs> okay, so this one is a must for you. Swamiji. Okay. This is a very special time in my life, 93, when I came to Swamiji, and it was very special that I was even accept accepted. Um, uh, so the time spending with him, I was the only student, only when Cheprakash came. So we were two students sometimes, and being just with him, because there was no other group. There was a group supposed to come, but couldn't. And so I was with Swamiji all the time. So. It was very special, but honestly, I only realized it later how precious that chance in my life was. And since then, um, when I'm teaching, I'm always singing uh, the Tatparamparaya mantra, and I'm always imagining Swamiji sitting next to me on my left side and having this, like uh, opening then the wisdom through uh, flowing through uh, from the power and pride flowing through me then to whomever I am teaching in the classes. So Swamiji, the energy, the image is just having, um, having been able to, to see him alive is, is very important for me. It's Great. not that much rapid. Huh? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Just... <laughs> Okay, so the next one is uh, love. Love. Um, again, Swamiji's um, way of putting it that love is profound interest. And Amaji is also often talking about this, that love is profound interest. And I think this meets it very much. It's not the emotional urge only for hugging or kissing, but it is also the, the interest for everybody, for all the creatures, let's say, on the earth, which um, I have a lot of possibilities to find out in my garden. <laughs> yes. Okay. And your next one is rhythm. Rhythm. Very important um, to follow a sadhana is the rhythm. So it's easy to lose rhythm by just certain um, things in life. And it's difficult to get back into rhythm for sadhana. And the rhythm is, is I think, important for all we do. So um, yeah, rhythm is the basic. If you wanna 
move somewhere from one part from one place to another place rhythm is which is keeping you going perfect and you have swadhyaya next this is something i often use uh, in my classes also uh, that's what yeah yeah this is the first step to written <laughs> this is the first step to go somewhere uh, so yeah yeah always again reflecting reflecting what is important for one's life and what is possible um, in, in your life so to realize what you have to change and can change to realize uh, what you can't change and how to find your mind <laughs> to settle the things you can't change. So this is Swadhyaya. It's, it's the first step to everything. Nice. And next you have Samadhi. Nice if it happens. <laughs> 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 to be one with Adi, the um, universal energy. I guess I had some glimpses of Samadhi, especially when I am in India with, with your rituals like the Shiva Ratri, for example, or just moments where having the feeling being united in, in the energy with, with the universe. Yeah, Shiva Ratri is quite an energy actually, just to be present there, especially that day, you really get it. Nice. And your final one is karma. Karma. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quite an important one. <laughs> um, kr, the root verb of doing. So uh, karma, what we have done, what in the here and now we can decide of doing and which is then deciding about our future so karma is um yeah it, it's 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 the reaction of to action but we have an easy way in switzerland there is products called karma so we just can have it on the table eating karma wow <laughs> eating it away <laughs> Yeah, get it done, you know, like, Kagma. <laughs> okay, so we thank Sri Devi for her honest, sincere and forthright remarks on her own personal sadhana and the status of yoga in the modern world. Her invaluable support for the ashram is much appreciated and we are always there for you, Sri Devi, and really admire you so much and... Uh, Thank you so much for accepting this proposal. It means a lot and I'm sure everyone out there just loves it. Thank you very much to you, Divya, giving me the opportunity. And also uh, through you, I have connection to your parents and Swamiji and Amaji. I, I feel the energy wonderfully blooming through you. Keep on going on your path.